Greetings and salutations, everybody. Technicals Tinkers here, checking in on the 3D print operation for today. For the uninitiated, I'm a small business owner and I got interested in 3D printing and I thought, hmm, I'll try this out at home first to see if I can prove the concept and maybe I can scale this up into a proper subsidiary of my main business, which has nothing to do with 3D printing. So I'm trying it out. I'm a total novice. This is just exhibition. This is not instructional. I make a lot of mistakes, but my mistakes are your entertainment. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can live vicariously through me or just tell me what an idiot I am. What am I working on today? Well, big news. I made the sale. I sold one of the giant pew pews, the giant uh, Glock pew pew. Sold that, just got finished packaging it up. It took an abnormally long amount of time to figure out how to package that thing. So that was a good learning experience. Good to know what it all entails. I wanted to make sure it didn't break. So we got that all packaged up. We're gonna send that out tomorrow. To replace it, I'm printing another one. So because I've adopted recently this strategy of uh, only listing it on the Etsy once I have one produced because they take so long to print. Uh, it's gonna take, with all the printers tasked on a Glock, you're still looking at like a couple, day, well, probably like a day and a half just to print it and glue it, and then another day or two just to get it like painted because you have to paint it in stages. Uh, so that's what everything's tasked on right now. I mean, we didn't do a vlog yesterday. We did the recap video. So in that time, made a few changes to the uh, the little print sort of setup over here. Got a rack for all my bamboo filaments and all my production filament down here. So about 20 something kilos there and uh, a lot of bamboo filament over there. And I just kind of bit the bullet and said, you know what, I don't care anymore about keeping all the open spools in a dry box because I've got a mini split in here. It stays relatively dry. So I got a rep rack over here to put all these up here and it makes for a nicer shot too. Move the sew ball down, got some extra space here for like tools and whatnot. And I have my nice printers here in the middle. So when I do videos, I can just kind of move in on them real quick versus the sew ball down there. Sew ball has been working great. A lot of people asking about it. A lot of people uncertain about a Soval, but it's been great for me. It's a little finicky with uh, connecting to the Wi-Fi. I might actually run a hard, does it even have ethernet? If it has ethernet, maybe I'll run a hard line to it. And for the, uh, the only things really left to do are set up a, uh, a discharge uh, can over here for the P1P and all this in preparation for the Armstrong Giga, which is due in like a couple weeks. So that'll be a nice addition once it gets here. And very excited that we were able to get our giant Colt Python glued together did the drum separate and the bullets that were inside. I just went ahead and did a quick spray on the front with the copper on the back of a, uh, well, this is actually gold, but I'm hoping it kind of is giving brass because it's supposed to be brass. So once I glue those into place, it'll be a little bit of a nicer effect. Got the body painted in this nice uh, slate gray color. I'll be using these, uh, this is Elegoo wood PLA. It supposedly has wood fibers in it. And this top layer monotonic, um, you know, initially when I saw it, I was like, you know, it looks kind of chintzy, but it, it looks like wood <laughs> when you do it monotonic like that. It's kind of like a wood grain. So once everything's dry, I'm going to go ahead and glue those on and we'll get that listed. We got our all brass glamp, all painted, all uh, printed up and the all black, a little better version of the all bat black glamp. Hopefully we can get those listed today or tomorrow as well. I got this bad boy. I'm going to hopefully take a look at this this afternoon, 3D scanner. And hopefully, I think the first candidate of the thing I'm going to try to scan to put it through the stress test is my steampunk bull here. So we'll see if that works out. This is the point in the video where I kick it to my future self to see how it all worked out because I got a lot of things to do. So I don't have time to be messing with you on camera. Take it away, future me. And it is 100% the next morning, Monday morning. Let's see how everything worked out. This is my, this is genuine. I haven't been in here yet. So... Cover one, section of the Glock looking okay. Top back of the slide looking okay. Uh, not sure about this one, let's take a look here. All right, so this is the lower uh, part, front lower. So I was a bit concerned about the top finish. I upped the layers on all of these to 10 top layers just to like, you know, if there was an issue it would like correct. Doesn't look too bad. And the front section of the slide over here looking pretty good. Here on Mr. Soval, obviously runs a bit faster than the Cobras. Looks pretty good. I ran it uh, really hot. Um, so let's just do a little sneak preview of the, how it came out. The, yeah, looks pretty good. A little ghosting there. 
for sure. Definitely some ghosting. Uh, but this gets painted, so not too, too, too concerned about it. Structurally, it looks just fine. And we were able to get this kind of glued up mostly. This is the big Colt Python, and it's big, hand for scale. Not th really thrilled, to be honest, with the color of that wood handle. Um, I think the light handle would work better if the if the gray was darker or uh, just a dark one of the other. There needs to be more contrast because the wood and the gray are kind of both like medium-ish. Like I'd prefer like a dark and a light. But on the front here, the bullets, that kind of is a nice touch. You know, it kind of gives you a little sneak of a detail in there. I think it came out pretty good. So... I'm gonna uh, finish gluing up the other side of it and go ahead and get it on the Etsy. And I didn't show this in the first part of the video. <laughs> this is the box for the gun. Uh, so it took me a little while to get it together because obviously the guns are quite large and I don't have like a standard sized box for it. Me, I, I just like buy boxes on Uline. They cost more, um, but I like having just what I need. But with something like this, like these guns up here, um, they're so large, uh, it's just not something I'm gonna like keep on hand because you have to buy on the U-line yet. The minimum you can buy is like 25 boxes and boxes that are in that range, you're looking at like eight, 10 bucks per box. So it's like, you know, don't wanna drop like 300 bucks on boxes for these models. Now that I've sold one, it kind of proves the concept. So maybe it's worth it. The only thing is, is that that is a 40 by 30 by 12, uh, how the size that it ended up. I could probably get away with something a little tiny bit smaller, maybe a couple inches off each dimension. Uh, but that size box doesn't exist on Uline. I know they have like 2,000 different box variants. Uh, so I'm going to probably have to like cut that dim in half and make it like a probably like a 20 by 30 by 12 and then just use two of them and telescope them up, uh, which I you know prefer not to do. But overall, it probably comes out to the same price and it's, you know, just a little sort of easier but my thinking is if I'm gonna go and buy bigger boxes that accommodate the Glock, then I need to buy boxes that also accommodate other large things. And I was measuring this thing, and because the tip, the, uh, uh, to tip, when I say quite long, I mean absurdly long. Uh, yeah, 48. So if the, if the, <laughs> if the model's four feet long, that means I need at least, you know, uh, really like to have like at least three or four inches um, between the model and the box itself as an area to put padding and cushioning and things like that. So it's like, you know, oh my God, so I'm looking at like a 50 something inch box. But again, we could go with that telescoping method. It's just, I'd really like one, one, uh, one size to fit all in terms of all these models, but like varying thicknesses too. Like the little boy atomic device is certainly thicker because it's like 12, uh, 12 inches wide just on its own, just the model. So you'd need a box that's like 14 wide. And then when you go into shipping, um, it's very clear that they calculate it based on cubic inches. So originally when I was shipping the, the Glock, I was kind of playing around with it and I overestimate my dimensions just to make sure there's no issue. And the original shipping quote was $280. <laughs> so I put in the actual dimension and it came down to like 80 something dollars, which for a big model like that, like, you know, makes total sense to me. Could I gotten, have gotten it cheaper? Probably if I hunted around for it, but you know, I'm not sure what sort of volume requirements they have. Uh, but certainly since I dropped the price of the Glocks, maybe I'll end up selling more and it would be worthwhile to set up some of those and, you know, maybe shave off a little bit more. But certainly I'm like kind of on that upper end of a uh, of size before I start getting into really expensive um because it doesn't weigh a lot I think it's 16 pounds uh but it is big it's like you know 40 by 30 by 12 like I said so really going to be looking around for something like that just to make sure I have those on hand so I can continue to sell the large models and over here got my what's the front what's the back I don't know this is the front got my Revo Point Mini 2 here excited to get this set up and play around with it today I'm not sure what kind of learning curve there is on it. I imagine there's not much of a learning curve. Um, just wondering how I'm gonna set it up because I, I do know that it just, uh, you set it up to your computer. So I do all my modeling and I, everything on my main system and I have a good computer. It's a 9950X with uh, 64 gigs and you know 4070 
Um, so I've got like a beefy enough system. The only problem, the only problem is, is that um, like it's a really good system, right? But even a really good system has its limits. Uh, and so when you're running Bamboo Studio, Orca, Anycubic Slicer Next, uh, Filmora, uh, and then like 50 Chrome tabs, you know, it, it doesn't matter how, how good your system is. The computer's going to be like, I, I can't take it anymore. And uh, so if I do that, and I've got all that running on top of running a 3D scanning software, which I imagine requires like, I don't know, is this USB 4? I, I imagine they wouldn't make this USB 4. I'm sure it, you know, eats a ton of the USB rail in terms of bandwidth. Um, so I've got my other system over here, which is actually a 79 or a 7800 or 7900X with 96 gigs of RAM, a DDR5, uh, and a 3080 Ti. So I've got two really nice systems here, um, but this one I don't really use much. So maybe th this one becomes the 3D scanning uh, thing. It's not like the, the only problem is, is that both of those systems, both of these, both of my systems here are actually in that closet. Uh, so I, I have a raceway that comes through the wall and terminates out here. So that way I can keep all my computers in my rack and then just all the wiring runs out here so I can keep everything clean and a free of wires and everything stays in the rack where it's, you know, nice and neat and tidy. And that was by design. I built it that way. Um, but when you go to plug things in, uh, you have to plug them in and then run them through a, uh, I don't know what call it, a Jeffrey's tube uh, to get them out here where you need the USB stuff. And especially if you're running stuff that's uh, like high USB bandwidth, like, you know, 3.2 Gen 2 or USB 4 or whatever. Um, there are some upper limits, I've, I've noticed for sure, on those uh, on USB extenders. Uh, and you can get active ones. I've never really seen one that's active to the point where it has like active power where you plug it in. And it, uh, I think the, the active ones just draw extra power from the 12 volt rail on the computer to uh, to boost the signal to uh, alleviate attenuation. I don't know, I, I have no idea how that works, uh, but there is certainly a, an upper limit to it. Uh, so maybe I'll do it on that system. Excited to get that set up. Gonna ship out the Glock. Hopefully it don't cancel or charge back and hopefully it doesn't break in shipment because that'd be an absolute nightmare. Hopefully we can get the glamp up today and just continue to work on uh, uh, the stuff. So certainly a lot got done over the past few days. Gonna be looking at doing some other <laughs> experiments with lamps. Uh, I haven't listed a lamp, but a lot of people seem like smitten with the lamp. They seem uh, charmed and enchanted by it. So hopefully I uh, can have, experience some more success there. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching the daily vlog. Let me know what you wanna see and what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's the nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. On the technicals, see you next time. <laughs>